All right, so this is it. A lot of chemistry has been learned in order to get to this point. What I'm going to teach you today is what you're going to need in order for you to be able to predict what happens when two chemicals come together. First of all, we need to learn some background information. Actually, we need to just review some background information. Why is it important to be able to indicate that a substance involved in chemical reaction is dissolved in water? Quite simply, if it's not dissolved in water, many reactions will not occur. They only occur in water. Uh, you can look at me and say, hey, Mr. Marino, will calcium carbonate and sodium chloride, well, I'm sorry, will sodium carbonate and calcium chloride react? And I would look at you and go, is, are they in the solid form or are they in aqueous form? And depending on your answer, I could, be, I could, I could tell you. Because if they're in solid form, I would say, no, they're not going to react. But if they're dissolved, I would say, yes. Yes, calcium carbonate will be produced. So whether something is dissolved in water or not makes all the difference in the world. So, we could conceivably take sodium chloride and break it up into its ions by melting it. Yes, we could. And that would allow it to react with stuff. But the problem is that in order to liquefy sodium chloride, you would have to get it to a very high temperature. So, you can either accomplish your goal by getting something to around 340 degrees Celsius or you can add water to it and it'll happen the same thing will happen sodium chloride will break down into its ions so most of the time any reactions involving sodium chloride just happens in water because it's just a whole lot easier there are two ways of showing that something has dissolved in water both of these are correct but I don't like one of them. One of them is bad. This first one is bad. NaCl, aqueous. Because what does aqueous mean to me? Aqueous means that they are friends and they're not together. They're in their Facebook status, it would say single. Aqueous means single, but they're friends, okay? What does this appear to be? It appears that they are together. And then aqueous means they're not together. So this is kind of contradictory. And yet we have to accept it because some people just like to write it this way. So I feel that this is contradictory because by putting it together, it looks like they're together. And by saying aqueous, it tells me that they're single. Well, which one is it? I like this way better. I like this one better because it really shows me what's going on. They are friends, but they're single. They're not romantically involved. You're going to need to know that. All right? So, today, my goal is if given the reactants of a double replacement reaction, I can predict the products, write a correctly written netonic equation, and be able to identify the spectator ions. And I understand. Right now, that sounds like I might as well be going because you don't understand. You will. I cannot accomplish this target today. I will accomplish it next Thursday. It takes another lecture to completely accomplish this. There are five types of reactions, three of which we will be able to predict. Actually, you could conceivably, I could teach you how to predict all five reactions, but the last two, decomposition and synthesis, are too hard, and I'm not going to fight that battle. I'll let Eddie teach you that. I'm going to teach you how to predict double replacement and single replacement and combustion reactions. Actually, you should already know how to do combustion reactions. Okay? I'm going to teach you how to remember the differences using a metaphor. Jesus often taught in parables. What were those? 
metaphors, okay? Some of the greatest teachers in the world teach in metaphors. I want to be a great teacher. So I'm going to teach this concept using a metaphor. I'll take this metaphor will, will take us through several weeks, but we will begin the first part today with this double replacement reaction. Okay? All right. So I need some people with some strong egos who can take Mark. You can take abuse. Get over here. And Natalie. Oh, Ryan, get over here. And I need another girl who won't feed it. Okay. So, what we have here are two friends, two sets of friends. Okay? Now, what you guys don't ever see because you're facing this way, I'm the one facing you guys, and I see your eyes, and I see what you guys are looking at, is that Lenore is always checking out Natalie. I don't know what's going on between these two, but there's some definite <laughs> tension between these two. Okay? I think my conjecture is that Lenore is in love with Natalie. All right? And Natalie is in love with Lenore, but I don't see any progress in this situation. Ryan and Natalie are friends. Okay? They're good buds. All right? Natalie. Uh, He's somebody that she can feel comfortable talking to because she knows that he's not interested in her romantically. So one day they're talking and, and Ryan suspects, but he's not sure, so he asks, hey, do you like Mark? And she starts to blush and he goes, you do like Mark? And she's blushing some more. And he goes, well, why don't you ask him out? You know, it's the 21st century, just ask him out. And she goes, no, I don't think he likes me. And and Ryan goes, oh, he may like you. No, I don't think he likes me. Okay, so nothing happens here. Okay? These guys are friends, and one day Mark is telling, asking Phoebe questions. Hey, do you know Natalie real well? And Phoebe goes, yeah, yeah, she's a friend of mine. Well, I mean, do you know if she likes anybody? Ah, Phoebe knows what's coming. Okay, so it's obvious to Phoebe, whatever you're working on, Marielle, you need to stop. This is unbelievably important, and you all need to focus on this. We're not just having fun, we're also needing to learn, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so Phoebe um, it begins to understand, you know, ah, Mark likes Natalie, so she encourages him. Mark, ask her out. And Mark goes, no, I don't, I don't deserve somebody. She is so beautiful, I don't deserve somebody. And Phoebe goes, Mark, you're good looking. Yeah, you're a little goofy, but you're good looking. Guy, girls sometimes just like goofy, but good looking. Okay? So ask her out. No, I couldn't do that. So Phoebe's frustrated. So one day she is talking to Ryan, and they're talking and talking, and he mentions uh, Natalie, and she goes, Speaking of Natalie, I know that you and Natalie are good friends. Do you know? there's any chance that Natalie might be interested in Mark? And Ryan goes, well, yes, she is. And then Phoebe and Mark start hatching upon a plan trying to get these two together. You see, Phoebe, on the way back from Clinton, went through Edgemore, and she noticed when she got to the great metropolis of Constance that they <laughs> swear dance. Whoa, you see the sign for square, square dancing done here on Friday nights. So she hatches upon a plan. She says, hey, you ask Natalie to go square dancing with you next Friday night. I will get Mark to come with me. And we'll just accidentally meet there. And you know, when you square dance, eventually you have to change partners. And maybe something will happen. So. He goes back to Natalie. Yeah, you'll go square and, yeah let's go square dancing. <laughs> square dancing is fun. So they go square dancing. I can't dance. And, <laughs> you know, you dozy do. So dozy do. No, dozy do. You have to link arms. Dozy do. Lo dozy. And you guys are dozy do. And then the guy. <laughs> Change her partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change no, no. <laughs> okay. 
listen very carefully, this will never happen in chemistry. It is possible, and frankly, probably in the great metropolis of Claxton, it probably shouldn't happen or else somebody's gonna get beat up. Okay. That will never happen. It's six metal, non-metal, metal, non-metal. Okay, before you know it, there's some tingling going on between these two. And he is lost in her beautiful eyes. And she's going, oh, he's looking so handsome. And before you know it, these guys are just enjoying it because... There's a spark. All right, hold hands. Yes. Okay. In chemistry, we call these guys spectator ions. Why? Because what are they doing? Watching. Watching. Did anything happen between them? I even have a song. We are the ions that don't do anything. We just stay home and lie around. And if you ask us, hold hands. To do anything, we'll just tell you we don't do anything because we're spectator ions. All right, so the definite action is between these two. We call these things a precipitate. They're precipitating all over the place here. Okay, they have now become a couple. Tonight in their Facebook. They're going to say, in a relationship with Natalie Holtonson, and in a relationship with Mark Lenore. You have to take my house. Okay. Oh, hold off. All right, go sit down. Thanks. All right. Now we can be together. Right? <laughs> okay. Double replacement reactions usually take place between two ionic compounds. Ryan and Natalie, and Mark, and Phoebe. General formula, Mark, and Phoebe, Ryan, and Natalie. And then what happens on the other side? Mark goes with Natalie, and Ryan goes with Phoebe. But are really Ryan and Phoebe together? No. The analogy we use is square dancing. Square dancing. Square dancing. Where you exchange partners. Do you understand even the name double replacement? It's even sometimes it's even called double displacement. It's still there's whatever happens it's it's double. there is a there is an exchange of partners. And it has to be metal with non-metal. It cannot be metal, metal, or non-metal, non-metal. All right. Where do these things have to take place? They take place in water. If you see the word solution, that is a dead giveaway that you're dealing with an aqueous solution. In reality, what is going on? A bunch of friends are getting together, and from those friends, a couple will emerge. It's a bunch of friends getting together, and from those friends, wasn't there a TV show called Friends, and eventually two of them fell in love? Well, no, like all of them fell in love with, with each other. Yeah. Okay, they all precipitated. When we write these reactions, we only include the ions that actually do anything. The ones Ryan and Phoebe, they're the ones that didn't do anything. They watched. They're the ones who instigated the whole thing. They looked on. We call them spectator ions. And really, we don't need them. They're, they were important to try to get everything, everyone together, but they don't really play a part in the final answer. Sorry. Here are some rules. These rules are going to be nonsensical to you. Okay, I'm going to let, leave it here so that you can pause it on the YouTube. No, no. So you can pause it on YouTube and copy it later if you want. But right now, they're not going to become, they're not going to be very sensical to you. Uh, 
it's one of those things where most of us learn it by just doing it. Warning. Make sure that any ion has its charge written down. This is not an ion. This is an ion. If I see Na aqueous, that is completely contradictory. Aqueous means that it's broken down into its ion form. Na without a charge is not an ion. So if you have an aqueous, I need to see a charge. Number two, remember, all acids are aqueous. All acids are aqueous. Make sure that it is balanced at the end. If you don't balance these equations, then you're going to get them wrong. There should not be any subscripts that you use for balancing. There should not be any subscripts used at the end. And I will explain that to you here now, actually. CuI2, you should not have an I2. That's the only time you have these little numbers is when you're dealing with polyatomic ion. So really, CuI2 means you have a Cu coming apart and two I negatives. So you write it as Cu plus two and two I negatives. Mr. Marino, but iodine is a diatomic molecule. Yes, it is a diatomic molecule when it's in its natural form. Its natural form is solid. So as a solid, I will agree with you, it should be I2. But in its ion form, it is no longer in its natural form. It is now dissolved. So you cannot put that 2 there. It's 2I negative. Any questions before we do our first example? So anytime a diatomic molecule, There should not be any diatomic molecules with double replacement. Okay? Don't worry about diatomic molecules. Don't treat anything like a diatomic molecule here. There are three kinds. Today we're going to focus on this one. Next Thursday, we'll do acid base and gas producing. Here we go. There are three parts to every one of these answers. The molecular equation, the total ionic equation, and the net ionic equation. All right? Part number one molecular equation is very deceptive. It's not very descriptive at all. I don't care for it. I actually hate this one. Nevertheless, you will see this on tests. EOC, I, if I was writing the test, I, you would never see it. But you may see it on the EOC and you may see it on the AP exam. Let me do it for you and then I'll show you why I hate it. All right, first thing you do is write correct chemical formulas for the reactants. Notice both of these are water solutions. So what is their phase? Aqueous. Aqueous. All right. So silver is plus one. Nitrate is minus one. That's balanced. So I'm going to scratch away the charges because they did their job and they got me to the correct chemical formula. Aqueous. Plus, sodium is plus one. Chloride is minus one. That is correct. This is an easy equation because you really don't have to balance this equation. So I'm gonna give you an easy one and I'm gonna give you a hard one. A hard one makes, why is it hard? Because you have to balance it. That's it. These all follow the same pattern. Once you get the pattern, then these are easy. Okay, so I'm going to scratch these things away because I don't need them anymore. I'm going to put down aqueous. Now, here comes the important part. You need to switch to partners. You got to be careful because we can't have any metal metal non-metal, non-metal partners. 
that doesn't happen in chemistry. So this is Mark and Phoebe and Ryan and Natalie. It's always the same way. Mark, Phoebe, Ryan, Natalie. So on the other side, we have Mark with Natalie. Okay, those are the correct charges. It looks fine, right? Good. We need to figure that out. And Ryan with Phoebe. And I'm going to get rid of the charges. Now, how do you know who becomes the romantic couple? The song. The song. Yesterday, I asked you to memorize the song, right? Did I give you the words for it yesterday? Okay, let me give you the words. You'll see. Be patient. I'll bring the spectator eye on fast. You may need to get on YouTube tonight and or tomorrow and watch the I, I heard that the uh, Mr. Anderson allowed the the screen to blank out again and then he just kinda quit. Okay, the whole YouTube video is on YouTube. You may have to watch it. Yes. Okay. Now, look at the song. Is silver mentioned in the song at all? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chlorides, bromides, iodides are soluble, but there's a secret I've got to tell. Working in the lab, it's plain to see they're insoluble. That means solid. With silver lead to and mercury one okay so most of the time chlorides don't dissolve always dissolve unless chlorides are bonded to silver lead to or mercury one and this is one of those cases so this is your solid that's your romantic couple now Sodium. Is sodium in the song? No. But what is sodium? Sodium is an alkali. So look at the first stanza. Alkali metal ions are really swell. Assume their compounds are always soluble. So anytime you see sodium, potassium, lithium, put an AQ on there. They're always going to dissolve. Okay, is the thing balanced? Is the equation balanced? Okay, we're done. We're done. This is the hard part. This is the hard part. We're done. Do you all see what we did? We switched partners and we figured out according to the song, we figured out who was the solid, who was now the romantic couple. Molly. Most of the time, most, nine times out of ten, you have aqueous, aqueous, solid, aqueous. So both, of them would be aqueous. both of these are aqueous. You see, and therein is the problem. It looks like they're a couple. They're not. These guys were just friends, and then from the friends came a romantic couple. So in a total ionic equation, we're going to write it the way it really should be written. Anything that is aqueous becomes a single person. Watch. Ag plus aqueous. That's Mark. And Phoebe is his friend. Notice I'm putting charges along with it. And 
Ryan is friends with him as well. And Natalie is friends with him. After the square dancing experience, now Mark and Natalie are a romantic couple. But Ryan is still single and Phoebe is still single. No, no, not in a total onic equation. Do you see the difference between molecular and total? Which one is more descriptive? Which one? Total. Total totally kills this. Total shows us what's really going on. We have four singles. And after the square dancing, we've got a couple and two singles. Okay? Now, the last one is called a net ionic equation. This really gets it down to the most important part. Because the fact is, there were two ions that weren't doing anything. They were single to begin with, and at the end, they're still single. Those ions need to be eliminated for this final answer. Who were the ions that did not do anything? NO3 is aqueous over here. NO3 is aqueous. Nothing. Silver is aqueous, but here silver is part of a solid. It did something. Leave it alone. Bring it down. Sodium aqueous. Sodium aqueous. Nothing. That's Ryan. Get rid of Ryan. Chloride, aqueous, chloride, solid. Bring her down. So 20 years from now, what will be remembered? That silver ion met chloride ion at a square dancing party, and they became a couple. Do you want to see them becoming a couple? Hope you're not embarrassed. I know, no one's looking. Ooh, that's disgusting. Before I show it to you, any questions about any part of this? The only, what, what is the difference between a hard one and an easy one? A hard one's going to have numbers here. It's going to have to be balanced. This is easy because they're all ones. I know. It's like chemical formulas, Allison. It's one of those things that you're going to have to practice. All right, here we go. Watch as Mark and Natalie react. Silver, silver nitrate, nitrate is added to a sodium, sodium chloride, chloride solution, solution forming a precipitate, precipitate of silver, silver chloride. chloride. See, see it looked like it was raining down. Okay. All right. This one's going to be hard. Wait, that wasn't <laughs> I know. Here we go. We need to move a little faster with this one. In a molecular equation, hate molecular equations, think they're very deceptive. Here we go. Lead, two, nitrate, minus one. So I'm going to need parentheses and the letter two, and the number two. Getting rid of the charges. Any clue as to what form it begins as? Yes. Solution. Plus, potassium is plus one, iodide is minus one. So that's balanced already. Any clue as to what it's beginning this reaction as? Solution. All right, so the first goes with the last. Lead, and the last is iodide. Plus, 
Then the middle ones go together in reverse order. K goes with NO3. It's always the metal first. And those are balanced. All right. Is this equation balanced? A two here and a two here. Any questions so far? Okay. Any mentioning of lead two in the song? Yes. Yeah. Chlorides, bromides, iodides are soluble. But there's a secret I'm going to tell. Working in a lab, it's plain to see they're insoluble with silver, lead, two. That's this one. And mercury, one. All right, so this is insoluble. What about potassium? Is potassium mentioned in the song? No, but potassium is what kind of metal? Alkali. Alkali, Alkali metal ions are really swell. Assume their compounds are always soluble. Total ionic equation. Anybody that is aqueous needs to be broken down into its ion form. The first one is easy. Pb plus 2 aqueous. Now, this is how I do this next one. This, these numbers, should they go down? They go down only if it's part of a poly polyatomic ion. If it's not a part like this, this, the reason why that is here is to balance this out. So if it's not part of the polyatomic ion, it comes down as a big number. So we have two nitrates plus 2K plus plus I 2, 2I negative. You got to distribute that two through. Student services, please. Yeah. All right. If it's solid, leave it alone. If it's aqueous, break it down. 2K plus 2NO3 minus. Finally, you know, you know, guys, go on, be quiet. You know you've done some, go down there, find it, ask around. Or how about if you read a big sign that says student services on it? It's on the, on the door. All right. If you've done this right, there should be two ions that look exactly the same on both sides. What are they? Two ions that look exactly the same on both sides. This one? Cross them out so that your net ionic equation only has what's really going on. It's ion plus ion yields compound. Okay. Always. What made this one hard is simply the need to have coefficients. It's okay. It's okay. You won't be alone. All right. If you didn't think the last one was interesting, this one's even more brilliant in real life. This yellow is like the greatest yellow you've ever seen. It makes me happy just to see it. This is lead iodide for me. This video does not do it justice.
it is a brilliant yellow. Wow. That's so cool. Do you see why it's called a precipitation? Yeah. Isn't it amazing you get two clear liquids to create this yellow solid? Yeah. 